What's up, my curbsters? I know it's early AF, but guess what? We is coming here today to get this nonsense together. Now, I know it's been a whole hell of a lot of stuff that's been going on out here in these streets. But uh, it's just some things that, you know, that compelled me to come live this morning super duper early, okay? We're going to first talk about a quick second about this Lizzo situation here because truth be told, I've been seeing a lot of the things going on around on social media and stuff in regards to, um, hey, good morning, good morning, um, to her walking around at this Lakers game with her ass out. Now, let me just tell you something. Uh, the stuff about whether or not she a big girl and she can't be dressing like that, that is not the whole reason why people are saying uh, talking about her in this way. Let me first tell you that when Nicki Minaj came out with her ass out, it was just distasteful. That she's not a big girl either. But don't nobody want to go to a fucking Lakers game and see Lizzo's ass hanging out on the goddamn seat. And she turned around and twerking. First of all, that's a family-oriented place to be. It's a time and a place when you should be able to do things. We're not restricting her from being a big girl and doing what she want to do and, and embracing her body and the way that she looks now. That's not the whole thing about it. And the whole purpose of everybody going ham on her ass is because it was distasteful. It was not the place to do it. There were children about. You know, and I think that sometimes people get into their feelings about the whole thing. I could care less. It could have been the skinniest girl on earth with her ass out. Bitch, go have several fucking seats, okay? This is a family-oriented event. Everybody come. We bring our kids. We bring babies to this event. It's the elderly there. Like, you just sitting up here shocking every goddamn body. And then, go get on live and, you know... Talk about she feel confident and secure within her body. Nobody is taking that from you. And I'm sorry if I got to put people in their place about this whole situation, but I give zero fucks because, again, that just wasn't a place to do it. If you on stage and you want to come out looking like that, that's fine, okay? Because that goes with your whole persona and the way that you are utilizing your tools in order to enhance your music plays in order to get paid. Ain't nobody stopping your bag, sis. But please, don't come to a family event and then you sitting up there with your ass out, sitting in the seats and shit. That shit is distasteful, okay? That's my own personal opinion, and nobody was forced to do it. Oh, and don't forget that this could have been produced at Tyler Perry Studios, but it wasn't. <laughs> okay, now let's go on, okay? And I know this is early in the morning, so I really got to just tell you parental advisory is in, is advised explicit content is on the horizon, okay? Because the next topic that I really want to get into, because we don't have to talk too much longer about Lizzo and her shenanigans, because I did see her video and she was up there crying and stuff within her video as well. But let me tell you this. Uh, they, she was saying she was crying about this, that, and the third, but let me tell you, she, she really was having a nervous breakdown. This is my own personal opinion, because every time you turn around, somebody is saying that they suing her for the content of them using, of she using and abusing somebody else's music. And now every time we turn around, you in the headlines, cause you being, you know, all in the camera with no clothes on. So you, you were taking shots and stuff like that. I think that that is what people, why people is coming at her so hard. Not necessarily that she was crying over that. If you claiming that you being secure in your bag and yourself and everything else, then you shouldn't have been crying at the, on the video at all. Okay. So let's move on to this Nick Cannon Eminem situation. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Okay. This beef has been going on for so long, y'all. It's like. A whole mess of realization, okay? Let's start off from the beginning. So, um, teen hundred years ago, Eminem was kicking it with Mariah Carey, right? And uh, from what we heard, okay, the word on the curb was that, you know, it was just like a rendezvous that, you know, nobody was really trying to make it be, uh, you know, a whole couple type of situation, but it kind of got a little bit out of whack because... Uh, from what we were hearing, 
that Mariah Carey was turning into Mariah Scary, in which that she was constantly trying to pursue and throw her stuff around with this Detroit thug life baby, right? Okay, so uh so they ended up having a rendezvous or whatever they wanted to do okay and it ended she ends up meeting nick and her and nick get married they have a couple of kids blah 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 in the meantime in between time there was shade being thrown between mariah carey and eminem because you know he was coming at her telling everybody that mariah carey got some scruples loose she ain't all about this whole persona that she cracked up to be that you know they ended up uh, taking it to the bedroom and other places and all this other stuff. Okay, so they had their little battle. It was done with. But recently, let me just start here. Recently, you got Nick Cannon going on different platforms, and he keeps bringing this this whole how how, how many years has this been? It's been what like ten plus years or something. This whole incident and situation up. I saw him on Ti's podcast. And it was done expeditiously, okay, that he was bringing it up, that he was talking about it, okay? And he was like, you know, he ended up, he was going to get at him. He was going to have some goons coming out. Then he go on another platform, and he was like, Gucci Mane was saying that he would get at him, and da 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 And then he go on another platform. He keep bringing him up. So when Fat Joe released his new album out, okay, Classic Eminem, he threw some shots at Nick, okay? And it's okay. It's okay that he did so, okay? Because guess what, homeboy? You have been sitting up for umpteen hundred years, and you have been throwing shots about the whole thing, okay? So they are saying that they uh the broadcast isn't going, so let me just check and make sure that this is going on. This morning, super duper early, okay? I don't know if it's still going on or not, but y'all let me know. Okay, I see it. Okay, no sound. No sound. This is terrible. Okay. But anyway, I'm going to keep on going, y'all, because uh, now I see it's been interrupted. I have no idea uh, what's going on. Okay. Uh, Patty ass Facebook doing the same bullshit. But anyway, so Nick has been purposely going on to different platforms discussing Nick Cannon. I mean, Nick Cannon been going on different platforms discussing Eminem, okay? So all of a sudden when uh, the whole new album comes out with Fat Joe, Am takes a shot. And this is classic Eminem. He gonna let you keep talking about him and then all of a sudden he's gonna take a shot. So Nick comes out with his first diss song after hearing the shot taken from the single with Mary J. Blige and it was a couple of other folks and Fat Joe or whatever. I don't even remember the name of the, of the content, but, of the song. But nonetheless, that's what happened, okay? I can understand why Nick Cannon wanted to take his shot because, you know, this beef has been going on with them for umpteen hundred years. But let me tell you something. You had your boys get on a track. You didn't even, you only gave what? Basically a little bitty verse. You didn't really say too much of anything. I didn't think that the song was hot. I thought that Eminem song, uh, you know, verse on Fat Joe's song was good. It was decent. You know what I'm saying? Was it the best? No, it wasn't the best. But was it good? Yes, it was. Because he he took some under conniving shots at, you know, Nick and his family, you know what I'm saying, a including, you know, Mariah. So, it was it was a classic comeback. Okay, so Nick comes out with his uh, first round, his roundabout, but he got his whole crew on there. Uh, and it kind of reminded me of the Tupac hit him up situation. Like, I don't even know why I'm rapping on this track because you ain't about shit. Let me let my boys get on here type of thing, right? So, okay, good. So, now you in Atlanta, you doing your recording or whatnot and what have you in Atlanta, and you doing the bad boy things when he clinking the bottles together, talking about Eminem come out and play. So he got the whole audience out here saying, Eminem come out and play, right? Okay, so let me tell you this, and I've said it before, that in a classic battle on wax, you have at least 
24 to 48 hours to come back at this person. We are already down 24 hours, okay? Uh, and so within the 24 hours, instead of waiting for the reply, you come out with another diss track with your whole fam, you know, your boys again, clapping at back at Eminem, but you doing it on an Eminem song. As to think that this was going to be another, you know, jab or something like that. You should have laid low because now this second round is just as, is just as tacky as the first round was, in my own personal opinion. So, I don't know what is going to take place, but I know that if Eminem doesn't answer this, this is going to be detrimental again, just like this whole Machine Gun Kelly situation that he had with him when Machine Gun Kelly came out and, you know, really blasted on Eminem then. Uh, in my own personal opinion, and me being from Detroit, you know, I always stand up for Detroit, but you got to give credit where credit was due. That Machine Gun Kelly song was way hotter than the stuff that Eminem came out with about Machine Gun Kelly. So I just need him to wake up. Maybe he might need to call Dr. Dre and see if he could get a little beat or something like that so that he can go ahead and knock this out. But we need a resurrection of Eminem, okay? We need a whole resurrection of Eminem. So I'm going to need him to come out and take care of this. Because how does this look? You are going up against somebody who, one, uh, is 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 a Nicolonian type of person, okay? Uh, he has a show, Wildin' Out. He been begging your ass, basically. Begging your ass to come out on Wildin' Out, Okay? Uh, show so that, that y'all could team up and go have this battle and stuff against each other or whatever. We know that there are many of people who claim that Eminem is the God, the GOAT, and everything like that. And that's okay. That's okay. That's only because when he first came out and stuff, he established himself as a battle rapper. He was knocking them out, okay? And he was doing content that has never been done before, okay? So now that everybody has pretty much believed that they have the antidote of how he has been able to create his masterpieces, a lot of people have tried to come out and duplicate it. And that's okay too. But what I feel as a individual within the hip hop community that you have to come out smashing because there's no way that you should let Nick Cannon, who really can't rap, who is uh, not really a battle battle rapper, a street gutter battle rapper. Uh, he's a Nickelodeon type of rapper. To come out and make you look foolish the way that you do. Like this right here, this can't go on. So I'm going to have to ask him to come out and do his due diligence and put him to sleep. Okay? Uh, am I taking sides? No, I really like Nick Cannon. But I just know that if it had to come to an actual battle, I don't believe Nick got bars like that. Okay? That's my own personal opinion. And everybody, you want to sit up here, we know that Nick is in the streets. We know that Nick got goons. Okay? Uh, same here for him. We know that as well. But keep it on wax. Okay? And, and let's see how far we could go. Because it seems like every time we get somebody who wants to battle somebody else, the classic Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma situation, like, it seems like the one who totally has the upper hand never wants to, you know, take them up on the offer. You should have your shit already done and ready to be released, and it should be bomb. Like, you should be going hardcore ape on his ass in this release diss track that you got that should be coming out soon. This is what my own personal opinion in regards to M. Love me some M. I'm Detroit hood forever. I just need him to show up and show out. Okay? Uh, let me also state while I'm in here, okay, that there is a lot of other things that's going on today and, uh, in regards to this, to music. So you got, and I'm trans, I'm trying to transition into this next topic, y'all, because this has been another thing. But apparently there is a guy, okay, and let me make sure I get his name together, okay? Uh, uh, OT Genesis, okay, did a cover of Keisha Cole's song, uh, Love, right? And when I tell you it was the most cringe-worthy thing I've ever had to listen to, uh, ever, okay? And then Keisha was basically, you know, 
in disbelief, you know, that you, that somebody who is not really a caliber of, of a singer type of person will come out and, and use their vocals in such a way to destroy a beautiful song. And I understood, I understood where she was coming from. So, you know, she basically was threatened to take love off of iTunes because this new generation doesn't seem like they like to... You know, basically come out with their own perception of a song. Like, you could have did it in a whole totally different fashion than trying to sing it, okay? Maybe you could have just had her in the background, you know what I'm saying, doing a love something, and you could have came out with a chorus, uh, you know, to make it pop a little bit better instead of utilizing your own voice. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that some people don't think that this is classic. Uh, this is this new generation type of thing. I don't get it. It's not for me. I remember when Biggie Smalls was singing on the track and everybody thought that shit was dope. But he, you know, it was good, but it wasn't great. But it went with the song. This one, on the other hand, in my personal opinion, did not go for with the song. It was a total whack job, okay? Uh, Keisha Cole was threatening to take her song off of social media platform and streaming stuff. And then she turned around, she had to change her heart. And she said, I think I've had a change of heart because of how, you know, the new generation. But a lot of people was coming at her in the comments saying that, oh, it's because you getting more streams on iTunes and stuff on your song because he rejuvenated your music. Uh she was like, no. She said, you know, uh, once an artist creates something so close to the heart, we release it to the world. And no matter if it makes you cry, laugh, sing, or all three, it's been released. It's you guys, it's you guys now. That song was very personal to me because it changed my life. Maybe I did care too much. This is what Keisha Cole has uh, posted on her social media. Uh, she also uh, responded to a critic who said, she changed her mind because of the streams, which I was talking about. And she was just like, no, that really wasn't what it was all about. Okay. So I just think that sometimes when you, when you try to do a dupe of somebody's music, you supposed to want to do it justice. In this case, my own personal opinion, it was not done justice. End of that. Also, you guys, let me also let y'all know that Detroit rapper OB Trice was arrested uh, a few days ago as suspected in a shooting at his home. Uh, I'm getting my information from the Jasmine brand. Y'all know that OB Trice was once signed to Eminem's uh, record label. And you know, as he is Detroit bound as well. Uh, they indicate that uh, rapper OB Trice of Detroit is currently in custody after an early morning shooting. Friday, December the 6th. The shooting took place at his Commerce Township township home, and the victim was an 18-year-old man who was reportedly hit in the leg during a domestic dispute, according to Click on Detroit. Police arrived on the scene after getting reports of a person screaming that he was shot. Officers spoke with the person who dialed 911. And that person reportedly showed them the home where they believed the shooting came from moments before. Police were also told that a white car was spotted speeding off just before officers arrived. According to the reports, officers then approached the home and saw a man leaving through the front door with a gun in his right hand. They told him to put the weapon down and to get on the ground. Police noted a couple of uh, a couple that lives together. In the home had a dispute after the boyfriend was allegedly drinking. He's accused of pushing a woman during their screaming match. The son stepped in and he and the, his mom attempted to leave the home. That's when the boyfriend allegedly went to the bedroom, got his gun, and stopped the son and mother in the garage. The son reportedly saw the alleged gun and tried to take it away from the boyfriend. The son was hit in the groin area and was rushed to the nearby Henry Ford Hospital. Fortunately, he has since been released from the hospital and is doing well. Ob Trice, who was signed to Eminem Shady Records until 2008, was arrested in connection to the shooting, as well as for violating a friend of the court warrant for child support payments. His bond was set at $16,900. He's also facing an aggravated felony assault charge that was currently pending, according to the publication. All right? So with that being said, my cursors. 
that is the current update on these celebrities. Don't forget that you can catch all of this on all the platforms on Facebook, on YouTube, and don't forget the podcast. Uh, again, if you are interested in purchasing some items or your cursor shirts, and just in time for the holidays, don't forget to go to www.lovingmyteesby6.com and make your purchases there. As always, you guys, I'm up out of here. I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful day. And as always, I will see you in the chat. Peace.